Now, humans aren't the only species that likes to winter in the Caribbean. When things get a little chilly out there, migratory birds also head south. And for those heading to the Dominican Republic, well, they're likely to run into one National Geographic researcher who wants to make sure that their accommodations are not only comfy, but pristine. From coastal lowlands to the highest altitude in the Caribbean, the Dominican Republic's beautiful and varied landscape seems to offer something for everyone, including the more than 300 species of birds that live here, many migrating long distances each winter. For the last 14 years, National Geographic grantee Chris Rimmer has also migrated south each winter from his home in Vermont. Chris began his work here in 1994 by pursuing a fellow Vermont resident, the Bicknell's thrush. Originally, we came to begin to understand the winter ecology and conservation of the Bicknell's thrush the long distance migratory songbird that we study also on its breeding grounds in the Northeast US. And this area, Sierra de Baruco, turns out to be very, very important for Big Nell's thrush. It contains a great deal of undisturbed broadleaf, high elevation montane forest, which is the primary habitat for Big Nell's thrush. Each year, he returns to the exact same spot to set up his nets and traveling lab. His goal? to complete a comprehensive database of both migrant and resident bird species as a basis for sound management and conservation activities. There are 31 endemic species which occur nowhere else in the world other than the island of Hispaniola. So those are some of the very important birds to the, to the island, to the, to the people that live here in Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And of those 31, several are very rare and endangered. After opening the nets, the finishing touch, a tape recorder. And I'm actually going to try and lure one into a net by playing a tape recording of a Bicknell's thrush calling. My hope is that the bird will perceive this as an intruder on its territory, it will come in to investigate and fly into the net. Now all his team can do is wait for their first bird. Beautiful. It's nice when it and it works. Here he is. First, he gently places a uniquely numbered metal band on the bird's leg, something like an avian social security number. And we're lucky because this is a very difficult bird to study. They're very, very secretive. They live in these extremely dense habitats where they're almost impossible to observe. So catching them in nets is really the only way we have to, to study them. Next, Chris measures each bird, looks for fat, an indication of the bird's health, checks for parasites, and takes a small sample of blood. At last, the bird is released. Sit there and think about life for a second, and there it goes. It's a banner day for the team with four Bicknell's thrushes. And work continues with the net successfully, catching several other species of birds. The survey is a team effort, and Chris hopes Dominicans will carry on the work. We're training Dominicans and trying to equip them to carry on some of the work. This is their country and we can advise them and help them understand what needs to be done, but it's in their hands ultimately. Birds higher in the canopy usually can't be caught in these nets, so Chris's team also monitors the population by doing a point count. For 10 minutes, he counts all the birds he sees or hears from a specific location. By combining the daily records of all the birds his team encounters, along with all the netting data, Chris can begin to put together a picture of the bird population in this forest. The result shows that shrinking habitats are a serious threat for birds in the Dominican Republic. 
In his surveys here, the number of male Bicknell's thrushes outnumbers females four to one. The males dominate this prime habitat, forcing the females to live at lower elevations, areas with an inferior food supply, and areas more affected by human activity. This means that the females need special attention in order to ensure their survival over the winter. So if you lose a patch of forest, the birds that are there, migratory and resident, they really have nowhere else to go. There's not enough habitat to support them. So it's crucial that we maintain some of these big areas of primary intact forest and that we begin to restore some of the other forest types that are important, say, in the case of the female Bicknell thrushes. So it's a, it's a big, uh, it's a big challenge and uh, it's not happening overnight. Well, this year's survey may be done, but next winter the Bicknell's thrush will return once again. And there's a pretty good chance that this biologist will too.